Now, we have one other big concept that we have not addressed yet in um, talking about operant conditioning. And it, it, it has come out of a lot of the research and a lot of the uh, experimentation that has gone into uh, operant conditioning and its use even in the classroom and in other places. Um, and that big topic is the, the topic of punishment. And now keep in mind, all right, the, the, the um, one would say that the opposite of punishment is reinforcement. And, and so reinforcement, and I'll just put these um, side by side, or one on top of another, to make a comparison. Reinforcement, you should be able to answer this question, does what to behavior? Reinforcement always increases behavior. Now, you might hear people say, well, that, that, was negative re, negative, that was a negative reinforcer. Now that you've been exposed to this, you would say, no, that's not a negative reinforcer because it didn't increase the behavior. In that case, if, uh, punishment decreases a behavior or a likelihood of a behavior to recur. And so essentially, when we're talking about behavior, it or uh, uh, punishment it is a the administration uh, of an aversive <clears throat> or undesirable uh, aversive or undesirable consequence so uh, you uh, go speeding down Alameda and a cop catches you and gives you a ticket, that would be punishment. It's expected, not, not that it does, but it's expected that giving you a ticket will discourage you from doing it again. That's what punishment does. Um, negative reinforcement, and let's make the distinction again here is negative reinforcement rev removes um, removes an aversive event. Punishment applies applies a aversive consequence. Whoops, I'm repeating myself here. Aversive consequence. Get my U in there. So, a good example, here's another an example, and I know I'm, trying, I'm inundating you with examples, but you get in your car, and if you have a relatively new car, uh, you start up the engine, uh, put it in drive, and r drive away. Well, before too long, something begins to happen. You hear this very annoying sound, a beeping or other uh, a kind of sound, ringing, chiming, whatever. And that becomes very aversive. Well, what does it prompt you to do? Well, you buckle your seatbelt. On the other hand, if you're really um, devious and uh, avoidant, you will just buckle it behind you in order to turn off the stimulus itself. For some people, some would suggest, that, and that's a negative reinforcer. It, it reinforces the behavior by removing the negative or the aversive event. In, in punishment, it decreases the frequency of the behavior. And some people would say, in a lot of cases, is that punishment um, is, is the, the logical um, um, opposite of reinforcement, of reinforcement. And 
that's not necessarily true. Uh, it can have very uh, many uh, unwanted side effects. For example, Skinner once made the comment that punishment actually simply uh, shows people ways to, to avoid it. And so, in other words, when we see punishment, rather than learning from it, we simply learn uh, uh, more sophisticated ways to um, avoid it by getting around it or whatever. It's interesting that even in Scripture, uh, we talk about feedback, and it's not punishment necessarily, but a lot of times... Um, it, th one of the things, and I, I was just talking to a, a group of students today, is that you uh, correct a mocker, <laughs> and it says you will be met with insults. In other words, he or she will figure out a way to get around avoiding getting the feedback you're providing rather than learn from it. Um, and so punishment itself is not necessarily the logical opposite and it it triggers a lot of debate around uh, this particular issue that you will hear a lot about probably uh, if you're in my um, uh, family psych class we will probably talk about it because generally in the uh, secular psychology co all corporal punishment is bad uh, and I, I think I'm, it's safe for me to say that. Uh, they don't really see it as uh, 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 how a lot of families who uh, follow uh, the Bible direction about uh, punishment and discipline and so forth, is they don't see it in the context in which oftentimes it's talked about. In other words, punishment, corporal punishment, um, a swat on the backside for inappropriate behavior usually is the last resort. It, but it, it, in a lot of the literature you will read, it is caricatured as abuse. When in fact, that is not the case. Uh, it, uh, what is uh, more appropriately done, and I think a lot of parents that I have been in counseling with and help to learn how to handle discipline with their kids is that if it comes to a SWAT on the backside, then it is short and sweet and there are certain requirements. So the punishment occurs in the um, corporal punishment, but what it follows is, is restoration and repentance. And in a lot of cases, uh, folks that are not coming from a uh, biblical point of view see no see none of this because they're studying the extremes on the ends and using that as evidence that all punishment like this is bad, essentially. So, food for thought. We we have a variety of concepts that are important to understand. Reinforcement is one of them. Um, the continuous versus partial is another aspect of it versus partial. Uh, you should be able to distinguish those two and the different kinds of schedules that come with partial. Uh, we have primary versus secondary reinforcers. Secondary. And we have um, uh, reinforcement uh, versus punishment and being able to make those distinctions are important to uh, keep in mind and be able to grasp on a regular basis. If you're going to understand classical conditioning, the difference of it from operant conditioning, and the various aspects and details that come with operant conditioning. And these are the key concepts uh, when we talk about operant conditioning itself.